Hello there, beautiful homemakers, and welcome back to Habits of a Homemaker. My name is Angel, and I'm your digital homemaking coach, where I teach you how to cultivate godly character and habits within your home for the glory of God. This video is brought to you by my How to Be a Successful Homemaker e-guide, where I teach you everything you need to know to thrive in your homemaking. In my e-guide, I teach you how to write your homemaking vision, how to rise early and get ready for your day, hygiene tips, how to implement routines, how to meal plan and meal prep, laundry tips and hacks, how to keep your home clean and in order, how to spend time with God while managing the home and the littles, how to pour into your own cup, how to set boundaries as a homemaker, how to budget and steward your finances well, hospitality, how to prioritize your husband, how to invest in your homemaking, how to beautify your home, and so much more. Be sure to check my description box and my pinned comment in my comment section to grab your copy today. Today's message is going to come from James chapter 1, verses 19 through 25. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version. Understand this, my beloved brethren. Let every man be quick to hear, a ready listener, slow to speak, slow to take offense and to get angry. For man's anger does not promote the righteousness God wishes and requires. So get rid of all uncleanliness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. And in a humble, gentle, modest spirit, receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your hearts contains the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word. Obey the message and not merely listeners to it betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth? For if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it and be a doer of it, he is like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror. For he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he was like. But he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty, and is faithful to it, and perseveres in looking into it, being not a heedless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys, he shall be blessed in his doing, his life of obedience. Ladies, your Heavenly Father wants you to know that you are beautifully and wonderfully made. You are not called to be quick to get angry. We are not called to be quick to speak. Sometimes our mouths can get us into trouble. Sometimes we can say things because we don't allow the Holy Spirit the opportunity to deal with our hearts or even to deal with others. I love how the scripture says, let every man be quick to hear, a ready listener slow to speak, slow to take offense and to get angry. Oftentimes, when we're listening to people, many of us make the mistake by being quick to respond as opposed to being quick to hear. And when we do this, we don't hear people's hearts. We don't hear what they're really saying. So while they're still speaking, while they're still pouring out their hearts, we are already responding in our minds. We're already ready to speak on a solution or our opinion or how we feel about it. And oftentimes we get offended or we take some type of offense and we get angry and we're ready to spew it out. But the word of God says to be quick to hear and slow to speak. You know, I think about the saying how, you know, God gave us two ears and one mouth so that we could listen more and talk less. And it's so true. Many of us are not quick to hear, but we're often quick to speak. And so I encourage you, I implore you to apply the word of God to your life and to be quick to hear. Hear what's in people's hearts. Hear 
what's going on and be slow to speak. Ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom when it comes to communicating with your husband and your children and your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. It says that anger does not promote the righteousness of God. We can be angry and sin not. But even anger itself is not something that promotes God's righteousness. It's not something that is really beneficial. So to me, that just shows me, Lord, help me to not get angry. Help me to not get offended. Help me to keep a calm and a loving spirit. You have to observe your surroundings. Observe what it is that you are intaking in your spirit. Are you watching things? Are you listening to things that are constantly putting you in a state of anger? And if so, it's time to get rid of it. James 1.21 says, So get rid of all uncleanliness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. And in a humble, gentle, modest spirit, receive and welcome the word, which implanted and rooted in your hearts, contains the power to save your souls. So let's talk about that for a minute. I love how it is a prerequisite to get rid of all uncleanliness and all the rampant outgrowth of wickedness before you can with a humble spirit receive. So literally, before we can receive, we have to get rid of the uncleanliness that is in our hearts, that is in our spirits of the wickedness. Ask the Lord to show you all of the uncleanliness, all of the rampant outgrowth of wickedness that is in your heart. Ask him to cleanse your heart. Ask him to show you what it is that maybe you have let into your home or you have let into your life or the lives of your children or your husband that is birthing uncleanliness, that is birthing wickedness so that you can be in a position to receive with a humble, gentle and modest spirit. And once you have taken that on, once you have taken on that humble, gentle, modest spirit, after all of the uncleanliness and wickedness is gone, you are able to receive and welcome, welcome the word, which once the word is implanted in you and it's rooted in your heart, literally contains the power to save your soul. My God, the power in that. The power in that verse alone, literally some of us cannot even receive from God because we are filled with uncleanliness and wickedness. And we literally are walking around with spirits that are not humble, with spirits that are not gentle and modest. We're walking around frustrated, aggressive, angry, unclean and wicked because we are filled with that and we're not able to receive from God and welcome his word, which once his word makes a home inside of us, Jesus, once it is implanted and rooted, when something is rooted, that's when it has the ability to grow, my sister. Oh, when his word is implanted and rooted in the inside of you, it has the ability to grow. And when it grows, the power in that is able to save your soul. And in you being able to be saved by the word of God and being the keeper of your home, you are able to implant that same word into those beautiful children that the Lord entrusted you to disciple. You are able to plant that a word into your husband and encourage him. You are able to be a strong helpmeet, not in your own strength, 
but by the strength and the power of the Lord God Almighty. We are to be doers of the word. And by doer, that means we are to obey the message, not to just be a listener to it. What good is that? To simply hear the word of God and to go on about your everyday life as if the word itself has no power. Hmm. No, we don't want to be just merely listeners to it. We want to be doers by obeying it. We don't want to betray ourselves into deception by thinking that the word is just simply merely words that have no meaning. We want to be doers of the word. So ladies, I implore you on today to be a doer of the word of God in your home. Not just in front of people, but in your home, in private, when no one else is watching, when your children don't see you, when your husband doesn't hear you, that you are still, still choosing to obey the Lord, still choosing to follow him, still choosing to honor him, still choosing to love him with all of your heart and all of your might because it pleases him and because you want to welcome his holy word into your heart so it can be implanted and rooted there. So may we be the homemakers that don't just merely hear the word of God and clean and tidy and do all the things with the kids and take care of our husband, but don't live out God's word. May we be those homemakers who hear the word of God, hear the message and live it out. May we be the homemakers who are not just surviving in our own strength, but are thriving by the word of God. Be encouraged, dear homemakers. I love you, and more importantly, Jesus does.